consider the lesser of the two evils and now i want to see what they're going to pair with this in the top side because you need to be so careful as ally you know you're going to get dove you know you're going to be in a lot of trouble and orn doesn't really do that for me i thought maybe we'd see the gragas because gragas can at least push that wave back stop the potential dive or at least slow it down against the orn you don't really have the wave clear to stop that level three uh, dive that can come in here if bow ops towards the nibbly Nidalee available, the uh, Lilia available as well, and that's going to be what's locked in here for Bo. And we talked about Lilia being one of the junglers that both Tarzan and Bo are more than happy to lean into. Really, really good at power farming through the map. This will be the first game of the split that we've seen Bo play it here in the LPL. Will do well though, especially with the amount of CC that you currently have on FPX aside. My only concern here for FPX is that they're going for a very short range composition. When you've got the, the Lilia, the Rel, and also this Renekton locked in, unless you end up picking up something like the Zoe here, your composition is going to struggle. So I want to see now if maybe LNG decide to pivot into something where they take the Zoe for Icon. Incredibly strong pick for Icon. He's been renowned for it even over the years. And then you can go towards a bit of a longer range and try to prevent FPX from just getting in on top of it. Alistair going to be locked in to answer Crisp's Rel. We talked about Crisp's Rel. I said I love seeing Crisp play in this pick, how much he's able to influence the jungle matchup. He's locked it in. To the bans here is uh, 80 carry bans coming out. This Tristana ban has been banned against Light almost every single series of the split so far he had one series where he got it twice lng looked amazing immediately and they have never had it since and i don't think he's going to get his hands on it i mean when tarzan was able to set him up so well getting a bunch of turret plates and everything else there it's just too much of a risk however we're still kind of curious as to what lng are going to go for right because there's the champions like the the samira are still up and available Jin. Uh, Felios maybe, but when you're putting this much pressure onto the AD carry pool, we're starting to teeter down the list. We could ask, should he see maybe if we are going for a long range option from LNG, something like the Varus we saw picked up by BLG aiming the other day come out. And I wouldn't even mind this pivot if they really wanted to, where you go towards like the Zoe, the Varus, and you just look to poke and try and keep FPX at arm's length. Yeah, Senna's also still available. Senna incredibly strong right now with the Kraken Slayer Rage Blade. Could work um, in terms of the scaling on the side of LNG, but we'll see what direction they want to go for. The alternative is, as you say, blind pick the mid lane. But Set being a very, very tanky team right now on the side of LNG and wanting to get a good AD carry match. Yeah, and it looks like instead of trying to play at arm's length, LNG are just going to go blow for blow. You've got this uh, set now that can move a lot of weight around in these team fights when you look at like the Renekton, the Rel, healthy members that if you cra crash them down on top of the opposing team with a showstopper can do a heap of damage. FPX though, now going back over towards the Jin, I'm a little bit worried about FPX's damage right now. Um, there's not a huge amount coming through from like the Lilia, the Renekton, so you need a strong damage dealer here in the mid lane for FPX. Well, it is doing B. Okay. So True. the Gangplank is locked in here. That Gangplank's almost certainly going up to Nuggery. Doing B's bringing out the Renekton mid. So we have Renekton versus Set as our mid lane matchup, which is not a matchup I expected. And we have a Callista coming through for light. Ooh. Incredibly aggressive bottom lane here. This is not the way I expected this draft to I'm finish. I'm not up. a fan. I hate that last pick as the Callista. Like when I look at the FPX team, I mean, you got Renekton, Lilia, Rel, even the Gangplank Barrels love these short range AD carries because you enable them so well. You opt in the, to the Callista, this very short range, early game champion. You're not really going to have a chance to bully it out, especially when you paired it with a relatively late game scaling team in the likes of the Orn and the Talia. This Callista just feels completely out of whack. I would have much preferred to see them go back towards, even if they really wanted to, something like the Aphelios or uh, even a Caitlyn or something that offers that late game scaling that you can still operate with. This Callista doesn't fit the bill. Oh, they're not looking for scaling by the looks of this. They want a scrap, and you know what? I'm okay with that, Dagda. 
But regardless of win conditions, I'm okay with a composition that wants to scrap, because that's all I want to see out of this series. I'm keeping my eyes on those supports though. Iwandi and Chris, both of these guys, been exceptional in the lane phase, but most importantly, been getting out on the map to work with their junglers and to set their team up for success. So I'm keeping my eyes on the bottom side of the map and watching whether these supports can get out of that lane and can influence the jungle matchup. Well, I think the mid jungle is definitely going in favor of FPX right now. So LNG are gonna have their work cut out for them if they want to get down to that bot side. Go for LNG, at least they have a good bit of CC to set Tarzan up on this Talia. And let's just, let's not forget, this is Tarzan we're talking about. If he gets himself a lead on this Talia, you know he will run away with the game. We're ready to jump into game number one here as it's FBX versus LNG. This is going to be an absolute barn burner. We know how fast paced FBX like to play. And LNG, they've drafted a composition that wants to go for these fights as well. I am expecting high octane action in the early game. I think we'll definitely get us in this mid lane. Doombi has a favorable matchup in this Renekton. Renekton, you can use that W to get rid of the shield from the set and have a pretty nice time in just the ability to trade. And when you add in the likes of Bo there as well, who loves someone who can just set him up with a point and click CC, Icon will have his work cut out from in these early stages. So Icon has played this set mid once before so far this split, but I want to do... I, I do want to point out that, you know, for any viewers that don't usually watch LPL, this isn't the standard mid lane meta. We don't usually see Renekton <laughs> versus set mid here. Um, but with Do and B in the mid lane, you never quite know what to expect from this guy. And with Icon, the way that LNG has developed as a team over the course of this split so far, it very much feels like often Tarzan is the carry out from the jungle and Icon is quite happy to step onto these more supportive picks and play towards that jungle. And that's exactly what this set is all about. And try to get in towards this bottom lane as well. Specifically when you have a Callista, she needs to snowball and definitely in the composition that LNG have drafted here. So expect a huge amount of attention down towards this bottom lane to set up light and get this Callista going. If not, you hit a mid game where you just don't have damage on LNG. Oh, the Urk's getting traded on very heavily. Light's got the lethal tempo proc. Iwandi trying to finish off the kill. I think he cancelled his auto there as LWX now trading back. Iwandi knocked up. Chris has a lot of spears through him, but I think not going to be rendered just yet. These early trades are exactly what LNG would like. Exactly. Getting flashes out of the Jin is going to set up so much easier for Tarzan. I Iwandi as well still having the Hex Flash to try and set up any of these potential ganks. And when you're at Talia... You need a lane that can try and set you up with some form of CC to guarantee the seismic shove. So the likes of Icon mid, Iwandi in this bottom lane are going to set up beautifully for those plays. You see Bo clearing his jungle. Our junglers are on opposite sides of the map right now as Bo moving towards this top side. Nuggery has shoved in though, so you don't really expect Bo to be going for a gank on the top side. Whereas Tarzan is already looking for his way into this bottom lane. Light and Iwandi searching for an opportunity here, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. FPX playing cautiously in the lane, not overextended. You're just going to see Tarzan move over towards the scuttle. So, might get spotted out by Chris, but yeah, a respectful play coming through from the FPX bot lane. I really like this. This is just smart from Ooh. LWX. Good stun in the mid lane. Icon's taking a huge amount of damage. Haymaker available, but I don't know if the shield will save him right here. One more Q would do the trick. The flash comes out, but it's followed by Bo. The answer is here. Tarzan misses the knockup, and now he's been caught because the roams from Chris are too damn good. And this is exactly what we talked about. Bo working with Doombi, getting Doombi ahead, beautifully executed onto the CC provided by the croc, and Chris always there always in the back pocket of bow and it's again the mad dog on the leash has been unleashed two kills for fbx and the fact that lng don't get a single trade there is going to be brutal for them moving forward let's take another look as bow sets this one up Bo sets this up, or Doombie even, sorry, sets this up wonderfully for Bo. That's CC we were talking about. And Icon, it's hard when you want to try and 
get that uh, haymaker off because you're trying to make sure, hey, look, I'm going to CC myself with this. Am I far enough away? Am I going to take a whole brunt of damage afterwards? And unfortunately, there's just no real escape. But Crisp, beautifully reading the map. We just said, look, I like this from LWX. Backing, not giving the opportunity for Tarzan to take advantage of the flash, this low health gin. But Crisp just uses that opportunity perfectly. He says, hey, look, I'm not needing bot lane. I don't need to back. I can't really pick up anything right now. Let's just move to mid lane and make the play happen there. Two kills come off the back of it as well. So Doom B with a tremendous lead for himself, but more importantly, Bo with a lead in this jungle matchup. We talked about these junglers being kind of the, the win conditions for these two teams. And it feels good for FPX as well to have a jungler back on the squad that does feel like he is a win condition in of himself. Because when we think about Doom B, generally speaking, he wants to be more of a supportive mid laner. That is the style that has succeeded for them in the past. And it feels good to see Bo really coming into his own on this squad and being able to replicate what they did against IG as well. And it feels wonderful because, as you were saying, like, Bo carry, Nuggery carry, LWX carry. Doom be offering this more roaming supportive style and gifting gold to other places on the map just takes so much weight off of his shoulders. And especially when we're looking at this game, where you've got Nuggery on the gangplank, going to be scaling up, doing a heap of damage. He's got a great matchup for himself. There's no need for you to be the carry here. Just work towards your lanes. Make sure that they're all going to be safe and dandy. So, it's uh, almost 2,000 gold lead right now in favor of FPX. And Tarzan is trying again to make this bot lane gang happen. He spent more time just hanging next to that wall in bot lane than he has anywhere else on the map so far as I wandy. Just about gets away from the knockup from Crisp there. He's going to be fine. First Drake is on the map. And it feels like both teams would love to make a play on that bot side to set up for this Drake. But they've not found the opportunity yet. The problem for Tarzan, though, he's spending a lot of time bot lane and not getting anything for it. So again, making his way in boss, oh, this tempo spot. advantage is going the way of Bo. He's been clearing out his jungle this whole time. You can see that big advantage that's been opened up in the CS department. And Bo's got more from his ganks. So right now, Bo is running away with this jungle matchup. And you can see the results. He said like 2,000 gold lead. But the pressure that they have on this map now, Doombie getting these turret plates in mid completely by himself because Icon just isn't here. Yeah, Icon forced out of lane and, you know, Set versus Renekton is not a fun matchup for Set. Every time you Haymaker, he can just save the, the W to just shred the shield completely and just take you down. So it becomes very, very difficult. Demolish, you can see, coming in. One or two more minion autos would have finished off the plate. It just survives on that one. But doing B, building himself a huge lead. And obviously on the top side, we've not talked about it because it's Gangplank versus Orn, right? Not a lot is going to happen in that lane. But that's because Owen can't do anything against Gangplank. Gangplank is just going to sit and queue him for free. Just easy peasy grasp stacks coming through for Nuggery. He gets to just scale up. FBX are in no rush to make this win happen. And you've hit the nail on the head. And the fact that they already have this lead is just good news. Like, they don't have to. They just scale so significantly better. And even when you look at the one losing matchup, it's LWX behind in CS in this bottom lane. Doesn't really matter. This Jin is not going to be the carry. The Jin is going to provide CC, going to provide a little bit of um, opportunity with the curtain call for the likes of Nuggery to set up his barrels, for Doombie to get involved. He's just there to be an assist tool. So the fact that the LWX is behind doesn't matter. And B's return to the mid lane. Dragon is up. And I'd love to see which team is going to try and force the issue on this Drake. If we see a team force the issue, but... With a Kalista on the squad, you'd expect it to be LNG who trying to make a play towards the mid lane. Iwandi's arrived, but it's just going to be to help Icon clear away the minions. You can see Tarzan has moved towards that Drake. FBX acknowledging this, saying, we don't want to fight right now. They're just going to go to the Herald. Yeah, and this is what I love about FPX drafts. The flexibility that Doombie offers to, to make these crazy plays where you're suddenly tossing this Renekton mid into a favorable matchup, giving Nuggery the opportunity to open up top lane with his Gangplank pick. It It's a it's so difficult to try and draft against these teams. It's similar to what RNG are doing at the moment as well, where you just don't know where these picks are going. So you end up opting into these unfavorable matchups, having no idea you've just done so. It gives a lot of freedom to Bo, because, hey, you've got a winning top side. Cool, I'm just going to take Rift Herald by myself. Oh, good double knockup from Iwandi. They're onto LWX. 
the ignite was used there, but Light never really got into the fight on that one. That was pretty much I won the 2v1 trading there. Yeah, he did get the flash out of LWX at very least, but bow now. Just going to slam the Herald mid. Doombi's already done all the work. He's already cleared three of the plates, so the Herald will just finish the tower off. Doombi should be in range to grab some gold from those plates. This is just textbook from FPX. That is the perfect way to use a Herald. Force the priority. Get yourself the plates. And now is FPX. It's like, right, I can just shove this in as Doombi. Create this long range for Icon. And I just disappear into the darkness. I can go wherever the hell I please. And I imagine that we're going to see a lot of attention towards this top side. Especially when you've got the CC provided by Doombi, by Bo, the damage from Nuggery. You're not going to survive very long as Ale in this top lane. Yeah, Ale could be in trouble. He's 15 CS down as Nuggery returns to the lane. Should be able to sweep up most of that because there's a cannon to tank the tower. And as we said, this is a gangplank. He gets the extra bit of gold. He's going to be sweeping up to scale up later. It's feeling real good for FPX. And the Callista, the uh, shining light, no pun intended, on the bottom side. Right now, only 10 CS up. Doesn't feel like a big enough lead to, to carry through the mid game, especially when overall gold is now 3,000 in favor of FPX. They are just running out of control. I'm keeping my eyes towards that next Herald that will be coming up in the next couple of minutes. You expect FPX to just try and focus on those and, and snowball this gold. Hang on. Oh, here comes the play top. <laughs> he's in trouble. I guess he's not in trouble. He's got flash, so nope. he's fine. Now doing <laughs> bees entering the fray as well. LA could be the one in trouble instead. The goat man managing to dash away from the stun and just takes a hit for his trouble. <laughs> this is the problem, though, with LNG. It's kind of like the, fl sorry, the flip side of these easy to execute, easy to understand compositions from LNG is that, hey, your opponents can read you as well. And that's what FPX has been doing a great job of this game is understanding, look, Tarzan wants yeah. to play around bot, although oh. Bo... Bo's been found, the blast cone comes in clutch there. He skips away off to safety. The wolf will but reset. He got both the little wolves, so, you know, silver lining. Going back to my point though, like, you can see LNG clearly want to play around bot side. Like we called it from draft. FPX have read this and they've gone, cool. Look at the vision control bot side. They, they're able to keep themselves safe. They got a ward in the brush. They got deep wards. So then there's no other, or sorry, they've got wards on their own side of the jungle, just the back of red to make sure Tarzan can't try and slip in any sort of weird direction. They got a ward in the lane as well. How do you get in here as Tarzan? That's why FPX have been so good at avoiding all these plays oh, onto the bottom both side. trying to all in. There's an all in on the bot side as well. LWX is going to be stacked up with the Rens. Can they finish the kill? Light needs to get this gold, but LWX survives. And now the curtain call. This is a three versus four. And somehow FBX have almost won that one out. Nuggery arrived on the scene as well. In the meantime, this top lane tower is in trouble because Do and B is just going to sit around here and finish it off. I mean, that's what we said. Doombi's unlocked from the mid lane. He's going to roam on top, play towards Nuggery, who is one of the big damage carries on FPX in this game. And now you've got the Essence Reaver completed for Nuggery. The Gore Drink is already good, done for Doombi, and he's just killed two towers. Like, the solo lanes from FPX are huge right now, and there's nothing going on in this bottom lane for LNG. Yeah, I mean, LNG, they tried to make the play happen, right? They tried to force it. And Tarzan, I think he's a little bit tilted because he's even missing his knock up on the red buff at this stage. It's uh, it's really not Just, looking good yeah. for the way this has started for LNG. This Callista pick that they all end on is not snowballing, and that's a huge issue. And I don't understand the Callista pick. Like, I would have preferred, as we said, to see them go towards a more late game focused carry. I know a lot of the the regular meta picks were already gone. Like, even the Tristana that Light's been playing a lot was taken off the board. But going towards something that offers the late game scaling, this Callista pick just means you're all in on the early game and it's not happening. On this dive, nice job from LWX again to just force Iwandi to overextend. There's no follow-up from Light. And then with the TP coming in, they're able to just turn around this uh, this 3v4, even nearly picking off the kill on Iwandi. This has been a spectacular defense from the FPX bot lane and not giving an inch towards the LNG side. And I want to... Now, FPX, despite being against this Callista comp, even get themselves the Drakes. It feels like every advantage is running away from LNG right now. But I want to reiterate something that we talked about before, which is Crisp's roams, right? We said, watch out for these supports. How well can they roam? How well can they get out on the map? 
Both of them have been getting out on the map, but Crisp has been a huge influence in multiple plays already, whereas Iwandi hasn't been able to do all or too much. Injuries here underneath the tower. With Demolish, they should actually just be able to brute force this one. This is the thing about FPX that is so hard to deal with. When you give them a lead, they just run away with things and they do not stop for anything. Yeah, they are the best team at snowballing, essentially, in the LPL right now. They have the second fastest win time. They have the most towers by 20. They just do not stop. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Ale wanted to try and make a play there. He wanted to clear the wave, but it's just not even happening. There's still a few minions here. I don't think FPX can commit to the tower. But just look at the goal. It's 6,000 in favor of FPX. They've only got three kills, but it doesn't matter because they got every single play on the map. They've got a Drake to start them off as well. They're four towers to one. Like, what do you even do? For, <laughs> this feels I, hopeless, and we're only 15 minutes in. I, I love this new version of FPX. Like, it feels like finally all the pieces are coming together. Like, a uh, strong mid-jungle 2v2 that's enabled by Doombi, just having these weird picks, but a carry jungler to back that up. You got Nuggery, super strong in the top lane, LWX and Chris back on form, and you're seeing the results here. Like, they are just outpacing LNG around the map, denying vision, getting terrors, grouping as a unit to force down these structures. And it is impossible for LNG to deal with. Their solo laners are massively far behind. Tarzan is massively far behind. This Callista does nothing under her terrors. She needs to be the one who's in the lead. And there's not a hope she's getting a look at a lead for a long, long time, if at all, in this game. And you know what? We, we've talked about the drafts and how flexible FPX are, right? And how that flexibility leads them to victories, leads them to being able to to 40 chess and outmaneuver their opponent. And I tell you what, Coach Stake that joined FPX this year, now playing against his old organization in LNG, I bet this is just brilliant for him. He sat yeah. backstage with his feet up. He's just watching. He's like, I have players to work with now. My players can play at least three champions each. This is fantastic. It's got to be feeling pretty good because honestly, FPX can do no wrong essentially right now. This game, we're at 17 minutes in. It's been three kills, but they have gotten Doombie essentially with every turret plate that ever existed. <laughs> Apart Doombie, from a handful that doing, happened in the mate? bot lane. It doesn't matter. Like, he's so the strong. the least necessary trade I think I've ever seen. He just straight up loses the trade. It, I mean, it. I don't think it'll matter in the grand scheme of things. It does stop FBX being able to pressure so hard. They had a Herald on the way. If he doesn't take that trade, they could probably just brute force the tower. Honestly, they're just buying time for Nuggery. Like, you can see LNG tried to commit people back because because Doombie went so aggressive, they thought there was going to be more action. So... Nuggery buys time on top side. Now Icon's trying to get up there, but they've realized the cavalry's arrived for FPX. So he's losing more plates and more, or not more plates, more CS and more terror damage on this top side. Like FPX, even though they're not really doing quote unquote very much right now, they're still getting these advantages, just running LNG around. Yep, nearly finishing that bot lane tier two as well. As we head towards the 20 minute mark and just take a look through some of the inventories on the side of FBX here, especially when we look at the jungle, the Leandris has come through for bow. Maybe going towards possibly a demonic, demonic embrace. embrace there yeah. with the giant's belt. Maybe even a Rylize. Not seen a Rylize in a while. I'd like to see a Rylize <laughs> as a old school league enthusiast. Um, I don't expect that though. But I'm looking at doing B's inventory. I'm looking at Nugri's inventory. You've got a gangplank that's already on two items. You've got this, I mean, this is pre Gore Drinker nerf, okay? This is not the, the weakened version of Gore Drinker. Doombi is verifiably completely invincible in the fights with that Starix Gore Drinker. You got cooldown reduction for days because there are three Lucidity <laughs> boots. I mean, when you look at the differences in the lanes, it's just night and day between these squads right now. And now FPX are going to start putting even more gold into their pockets. This tower will fall. They've got a lot of movement now as well to start working back over towards this dragon. Mm -hmm. They can even send Nuggery up to just collect this top wave if they really want to. But everyone on FPX is so rich that losing some of this gold doesn't matter. The At the end of the day, you've got, as you were talking about, that demonic embrace, Leandri's anguish, is going to rip through tanks. Nuggery having these two items is going to rip through tanks. And you've got a bunch of CC that's going to be provided by LWX and, this, and Cold, to, or sorry, and Crisp even, to set up 
FPX. Like, this is so hard as LNG to operate in these fights. And again, short range for Light, short range for Icon, short range for Tarzan. Like, everyone ends up grouped up for Doombi, for these barrels, for Bo. The team fight presence of FPX on these champions is just insane. It is incredibly difficult to deal with this kind of pressure. And you can already see LWX just crit that red buff for a thousand damage. We're 20 minutes in and his auto attacks are doing a thousand damage. That is a ridiculous lead that he has. And just remember how badly the lane went, right? For LWX. He couldn't trade with the Callista because he's against the Callista, right? They should hardcore lose that bottom lane. The fact that they are pretty much even in items in that bottom side is a really bad sign for LNG. And another bad sign is that FPX are posturing for a fight right now. LWX is nowhere near, so it's a bit dangerous for anything to be brute forced. But Nuggery is off just split pushing the whole time. And this all stemmed from Tarzan trying to overinvest in this bottom lane of LNG. He knew he had to from the draft. I don't really blame him. But the fact that Crisp and LWX played so well, just recalling, taking the loss, moving LWX away into this just getting health back, not giving the opportunity for Tarzan to make these plays. And even Crisp just heads up play to move towards mid lane, have that very quick kill by the three minute mark go in favor of Bo. Like these were so well orchestrated plays from FPX to stop LNG from ever getting a look in in this game. Yeah, and I've just been uh, shown by production that the individual lead in the mid lane right now is three and a half thousand gold. The difference between Do and B and Icon right now is three and a half thousand gold. We're 21 minutes in. A reasonable gold lead for an entire team at this point is three and a half thousand gold. Never mind one lane. Here we go. Gosh. That three and, a thousand, three and a half thousand is on Do and B. He just walks away. Tarzan doesn't even land the knockup. <laughs> uh, that was as sad as it gets for LNG, honestly. And you can see that LNG are trying. They're trying desperately to make these picks, stop this 1-3-1 from happening. And maybe, just maybe, they can buy some time. But time, even if they do get it, isn't really on their side. And they're making the plan to Doom B. I realize they don't yeah. want it. No, they've been baited in. Doom B's happy to tank a little bit of damage to set up the team fight. In comes the curtain call. But LNG are doing a bit of work to start it off. I mean... Look, it went better than I expected it to. They got two kills for themselves. I'd say that's a positive. This is almost a win for them. Well, actually, no, they got one kill. They got one. Hey, look. They got one. It's, yeah. That is still better than my <laughs> expectation of that team fight. LNG, we take those. <laughs> oh, that's heartbreaking. Sure when you go one for four and Munch is cheering you on, so you got this, guys. <laughs> you, know, you know that this has not been your game. FPX will rightfully take their barn. It's been theirs since minute 10 when they started to get this outrageous gold lead. And from this, hey, there's a dragon in a minute and a half if you really want, but you're eyeing down those inhibitor turrets as FPX and saying, I want to just crack open this game and I want to quickly send us to game number two. This is like, you remember I was talking about Nick Cage in the in the previous game? Yeah. It feels like LNG and Nick's, Nick Cage in two ways right now. In A, they're, they're auditioning for a really great film, and the other guy auditioning, who's FBX, is Leonardo DiCaprio. They're just never going to get the lead man. But B, the film I watched last night that was so terrible was called Next. And right now, I feel like LNG need to just go next, because that's the only way out of this terrible situation. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> and as LNG, I think you've got to go back to your draft phase, go look. We kind of painted ourselves in towards this problem of we needed our bot lane to snowball. Let's try and give ourselves a little bit more options. And again, we were saying, hey, look, it's pretty easy for LNG to pivot in this situation if they wanted to from draft. Don't go towards these uh, short range compositions. Opt in towards a little bit more range. Go towards the Zoe's. Go towards the Varus that we've seen. But top side. Cool. They're going for a pick on to B. This is 1v4 right now. Gordrinker is going to go through <laughs> and he's full health again. He will go down here. There's no way he could actually win the fight. <laughs> but the fact that he buys so much time against five people means FBX are everywhere else on the map taking towers down. This is a one kill trade for an in hip tower on the bottom side. And now FBX can just trot along to the dragon. And you 
just saw it, how large Doombie is. Even has the uh, the spirit visage as well to make sure that all that healing is increased once again. Like that is absolutely insane. But it also does it for shields as well. So you know that steric shield? That's gonna be an even bigger shield as well. So there we go, third dragon picked up towards FPX. Doombie's kind of going, hey, you know what? I like a little bit more armor. I like a little bit more magic resist in this situation since I'm just a big old tanky boy. So he's going to be looking, if we even get to five minutes later, that dragon soul. But honestly, with the way this is going, I don't know if LNG can hang on that long. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. It does depend because uh, we've seen a couple of slight overextensions here from FPX. A couple of kills that have gone the way of LNG. One of those kills going into the pocket of light as well. I believe that was the kill on to Doombie. So that would have been a shutdown. You can see he's on three items now. So we'll do some good damage. nuggery has been caught now on the bottom side of the map as well. So LNG with this roaming goon squad are slowly but surely picking up a couple of kills around the map. But every single time they go for one of these kills, they're trading damage onto towers. That's the problem. I'm not a fan of trading one kill for these structures. Like, yes, you can argue that with the Baron buff, FPX maybe would just be able to hard force them anyway, and there's not much FPX can do, but certainly it feels like overkill when you're sending all five members. I think if you, especially for someone like Nuggery, sent three people like Tarzan, uh, Light, and Iwandi, you should have been able to take down that Gangplank. No reason to send all five members and then potentially lose turrets at the same time. Well, they're looking for Iwandi. He's been tagged. He's been rooted. And now he's going to be put to sleep. Iwandi flashes out, though. And actually gets out with his life. Nicely done there by Iwandi. Good uh, use of the ultimate to try and keep himself safe. And uh, not quite the pick that FPX would have liked here. But once again, they can just rinse and repeat and pressure these lanes. Yeah, however, the Baron buff is gone. So it's not like they've got the same level of pressure. Uh, the only problem is LNG don't really have a huge amount of wave clear. They're heavily reliant on Tarzan. Heavily reliant on all in Nuggery by the looks of things. But there's the Magnet Storm pulling him in and taking him down. Icon the first to fall as in goes to and B, who is not afraid of your towers. He just 1v1s Tarzan. He says, I'm the only Korean allowed here on this map as they move back towards the tower. This will be the mid inhib breaking. At least two inhibs will be taken. But I think FBX might want more, Dagda. I mean, they're just going to be able to close this one out. There's nothing left for LNG. Knockups come through. Down into the slumber goes the goat. But Light is trying to do what he can. Off to the side here. Health bars are low. Maybe they can hold on. Light takes a barrel to the face. No kills come through for LNG. But you know what, FBX? They got the mid in here. They're happy with that and they back away. Okay, there's a little left for LNG. I got a little bit ahead of myself there. But either way, two minutes now until this dragon is up. They can turn towards that. You've got both inhibitor towers down in mid and bot. So, hey, send Doombie up towards his top lane again. He's going to be totally safe to split push. You can keep the other four members with yourself and just try and pot along between the bot inhibitor and then group with Doombie up in this top lane as well. You're going to be in fantastic shape. So, it's only kind of a delay, but there's not much that LNG can do really. And I want to reiterate something as well here, Dagda, in that FPX are looking incredibly good in this game, right? As you would expect, they're 11,000 gold, blah, blah, blah. We can compliment FPX all day long. But this isn't just like, this isn't like the first series of the day. For any non-regular LPL viewers, like, this is not what we expect from LNG. LNG is another really great team. LNG currently in fifth place in the standings. They're four and one. This is a team that should be performing well. This is just a testament to how great FPX are playing. And it's how FPX have been playing for pretty much since they lost their series to EDG. Like, that seems to have just put a fire underneath them. We're like, this isn't something that is ever going to happen again. And they've just ran through teams over and over. They looked this dominant against Invictus Gaming last week. Now we're seeing it again against LNG. Another one of those teams that we expect to see in that top 10, top 8 spot. So the fact that they're just manhandling these teams is absolutely insane. Yeah, it is uh, it is kind of nuts right here. As the Baron goes down, LNG look for one last ditch fight. Iwandi, the one that has to tank this team, that has to be the protector for his squad. 
He's just not tanky enough, and you can see the AoE coming on through. Here's the turnaround, though. Great damage onto the team of FPX. In goes Icon. Light is trying to dance around the fight, trying to get the Reigns two down. Is F L L LW is so low on this one, but Do and B turns it on its head with the triple and manages to win out the fight. That was a little close for comfort for FPX. Blinking health bars on LWX and Doom B, but Light. You just cannot carry at this stage. FPX will take home game number one. Beautifully done by FPX. A dominant victory. And that team fight looked almost like it was going to go the way of LG. I thought that was the miracle play for them, but it just wasn't enough. LWX walks up to I1D, almost gives him a kill at the end. But it doesn't matter. FBX take themselves a the game. They take themselves a win here. 1-0 up in this series with a performance that dominant. Honestly, LNG, I want to know what happens backstage here. I want to know what kind of pep talk the coach is going to give them. Because they're going to need more than just your average pep talk after that. Well, I, we already kind of highlighted it. I genuinely believe LNG painted themselves into a corner with that draft. Um... Going for this late game scaling tank in the top lane, then going for another tank in the mid lane and opting in towards the Callista just didn't really feel like all the parts were working together. I wouldn't have minded as much if it was like an Aatrox or something in the top lane. Um, and then you can look to play off of this mid game strength, but it just felt like the power spikes were a bit all over the place for me. And especially, as we said, having to play around light in this early game, having to get this Callista ahead, and FBX just not giving an inch. You know, they took one good trade in the early stages on LNG's side. They got the flash from LWX, but LWX was like, look, I'm going to take the L. I'm going to back away from this. I'm not going to give you the opportunity to have Tarzan uh, or even have I1D flash in on top of me and kill me. I'm gonna let my team win elsewhere. Chris Brom's mid, they get the kill for Doomby, they get the kill for Bo, and from that point, FPX are firmly in the driver's seat. So you're saying that the bot laner for FPX took the L to get the W and give LNG the X. I see, I see. So, very strategic well played, name well placement well from played. him. <laughs> yeah, phenomenal performance across the board here from FPX. And as you can see, LWX very, very low on that damage comparatively to light because of exactly what you're highlighting right he's picked this gin not because he wants to carry he's saying look i'm okay with being the weak side i'm okay to just sit bot alone so that chris can go roam elsewhere set to and be up set nuggery up and most importantly set bow up and that mid lane fight that we saw the kind of would be 2v2 between the mid jungle with chris then coming in to bolster that 2v2 that was the that was the beginning of the end for lng because it's the second fpx wins a skirmish like that they do not let go of the tempo. And that's why I honestly think like going in towards champions for Icon like this Zoe could have worked out really, really well. Um, Icon's a great Zoe. We've seen it time and time again. And when you're facing against the composition that was going to be such short range, it felt like it could have done a lot of work. So I don't feel like in game number two, we're going to see the same LNG come out where they have to play through light. I'd much rather them seeing open up a little bit more options. And then we might get a, very different game in our second match of the day. It does feel a little bit like LNG tried to imitate FPX a little bit with this kind of tank mid sort of style where you've got Icon playing something that's a bit different. Didn't work out for them. That's very much FPX's thing. We'll see what LNG do coming into game number two, whether they blow it all up and try again or whether they go for the same old strategy. We'll have to wait and see.